next legacy. All right. Thank you, my friend. Hello out there, Radio Land, all across the globe. This is Charles. I am Brandon Madison of Next Legacy Radio. Have a guest. I became a fan of this guy, and I'm going to tell him why in a second, because uh, I feel outside of the scope of music, I always feel like it's always a breath of fresh air when you get a chance to be able to listen to someone who, not just you haven't heard for the first time, but when you really tap in and listen to um, the music that's being displayed, and I always feel like it's an art form, um, I feel like we should play close attention, and not just that, just celebrate. Um support, find different ways to be able to do it for your uh, favorite artists and your artists that's coming out with passion. And I want to welcome my man, Matt Morrison, to Next Legacy Radio. How you doing, sir? Thank you. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Man, I am great. I am great. And before we get started and we start kind of dive into, because you have a new single and things like that that we're going to talk about, but um, I got to tell you, man, I, I became a fan. I listened to I listened to um, True Country, um, and I think that's kind of when I was like, wow, like, okay, this is a style of not just, I don't even want to put it in a classification of country music, but it's just a style of music that I feel like it, it's, it's different. You have your own. You don't sound like someone else. You just, you made it who you are as far as your personality, and I feel like not only is it lacking in the music business, but it should be celebrated. So I got to tell you, man, I am, I am a a fan now and a supporter and not just going in and listening to your music and streaming it. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like, let's go buy the single. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's it's that important to invest in. So I got to tell you, I appreciate, um, you know, the, the music that you putting out and everything else that you're doing moving forward. First of all, man, I appreciate you saying all that and that wonderful intro. That was just, you know, I, I can't, I can't even express my gratitude with that, but, I appreciate you realizing, especially how you mentioned true country. That's exactly like what we wanted to do. Like, you know, it is country music in a way, but it's also got a little bit of, you know, I don't even know what to describe it as, except as you put it, me, it's it's a little heavier. It's just truthful, but it's also still, you know, we want to have a catchy real vibe still where people can still dance to it. People can still enjoy it, but we want the lyrics to tell people, you know, what's up and tell them the truth. And it's important for us to acknowledge that for your supporters out there and the people that tuning in or will be tuning in later to be listening or just searching you and listening to your music that, you know, we all have to find, uh, you know, uh, I, I go into listening to a new artist just to, you know, try to get some ori- originality out of it. Like I want to yeah. hear it. I also want to feel it. Like I, I just don't want to go in and just be like, Hey, it's a catchy beat or the lyrics is pretty nice or, whatever else. I just want to, I just want to hear something that I can actually have a connection with. And, and sometimes you might have to play it again and again in order for you to realize that, yo, this is actually pretty good. And I love, and don't, and don't, Matt, I love all genres of music. Um, mm. I just love music, <laughs> period. So it's, it's important <laughs> for everybody to celebrate that. Like, cause I think it's important. We got to share that with the world, right? You're, you're dead on with that. And, you know, if, if people, you know, if they want to listen to my catalog, you could, you could probably tell, I'm sure you've listened to a few songs, but it's nothing sounds the same because I do, I do love music as well. Right. I love all music. I, I try to listen as much as I can. I try to expand my horizons. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm a country rock guy, obviously, but I listen to whatever and anything that I find to be real and honest and just, just like authentic. Cause like you said earlier, you know, it, you know, you don't want to be bashing on anyone, but it's hard to find that real authenticity nowadays. I feel like it's just fading and it's sad. So, you know, we, we try to hold on to that. Which makes me still believe in people like yourself and others who are trying to change the narrative. Like I always feel like when it comes to music, we could, we can pick and choose a lot of everything to knock it and say, okay, this is, this is a problem. This is what needs to be fixed. But also, we need to search for people who are really passionate about the industry and about what they do and how far they want to take it. So, you know, going through your information, Matt Morrison is my guest on Next Legacy Radio. Like, um, from the time that you were 11, I hear you picked up an instrument and you were ready to go. 
But <laughs> during that during that span though, during that span though, what what made you fall in love with music? Like, what was the thing that you that you got when you were younger that you were like, you know what, this is this is this is it for me. You know, that's a, that's a good question. There's, you know, there's never that one thing, but you know, I grew up in a very uh, musical family, both sides of the family, my, my mother and my father's side. I, my father still to this day plays uh, his sister, my aunt is phenomenal singer. Uh, my mom's sister is a great singer and music was always something that we just like, we celebrated. And to my parents credit, they, you know, we growing up, we listened to, you know, I mean, I guess everyone back in the day did this, but we listened to whatever they did. And so even as a young child, I was always listening to, you know, classic rock. I was listening to eighties. I was listening to, well, I grew up, you know, I grew up in the nineties. So I'm listening to nineties and, uh, you know, I've always loved it, but I think if I had to, you know, narrow it down to a couple times was I used to work, uh, in the music industry, but not as a musician. I used to like, you know, uh, work events, and I always thought I wanted to run events. I didn't know why I loved it so much. You know, I could always sing. Yeah. I could always play guitar. And it, it took me a couple years working in events to realize it's not the events that I love. It's the music. And that's what mm-hmm. I want to do. I want to pursue this. And, of course, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. That was eight, nine years ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we, we started the journey, we, we, we could say then. And, um uh, you know, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of lessons learned. And, but I truly believe that that's the way to do it is you don't just get picked up and shoot off to the stars. I, I really feel like you got to struggle a bit because that's how you know if you really want it because it's not supposed to be easy. And uh, I really wanted it and we fought for it. And, you know, here we are today. I agree. Not only is it not supposed to be easy, you know, you have your one off who might hit it. You know, it's like winning the lotto, right, or lottery. Exactly. Like you might get those one-offs that might do it, and it might look sexy. It might look attractive to folks. But like you said, you said eight, nine years, and, and, and I, you know, mm-hmm. I started thinking about my journey for with radio about 16 years, right? And there's a yeah. lot of pitfalls, highs and lows that comes with the, the grind of it all. But what keeps me going is not just musicians like yourself, but the fact that I still believe in the whole 360 situation of how music made me feel and how important that it is when it comes to just, you know, seeing people display their art form is something that I don't take for granted. And I think a lot Mm -hmm. of people uh, should look at it that way or, you know, or have it from a different lens where, you know, you can be able to get your own feelings and your own opinions about it, you know, out in the open. So, Um, In addition to loving it, you know, and you said earlier that it's something that as you are doing these events, like, you know, it's, it's just that passion started to display itself. Um, What was your thought process as far as, you know what, I need to like start getting organized. Well, actually I'm happy you asked that because it was a little, little, little hectic to be honest, (laughs) but what it, what I started mm-hmm. doing, I remember was I, like I, I've been playing guitar as you mentioned since I was very young, and I was singing even before that. Uh, so I mean, you know, I, I truly believe you're always improving, you know, in anything you do. No one's ever an expert, you know. Even the master is always learning. So I just right. said, you know, what, let me let me keep honing, let me get better, let me keep practicing. So I started by just brushing up everything because you know at that point I wasn't pursuing music, so I wasn't playing or singing, obviously to the, to the, you know, the frequency that I would have to. So, you know, I started getting trying to do my thing and I started playing bars, like, you know, the three hour, four hour bar gigs, uh, the ones that everyone says they hate, but that's how you get your start. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like that's, that's how you get, like, you know, if you could hold your own for four hours for three nights in a row, then you know, you're doing something right. And, uh, that's true. Right. So we, we started with that and then I started writing and, I wanted to be honest in my writing. That was a big thing for me. Even back then, even before I knew what I wanted to write about, I just wanted to write based on, you know, either based on true things that happened to me, you know, obviously, you know, you stretch the tale to, for the, the dramatic effect in the art form, but I wanted everything to be based out of, you know, real life experience of either myself or people close to me. And mm. that was the big thing for my process. It's like, look, I'm never going to write about something that's, 
like not, you know, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent true, but I want it to have some form of truth, whether it's true based in history, whether it's based in my experience, whether it's based in someone I know experience, it, it, I just want it to have truth to it. And that's what we've done. And that was a big thing for that process. It's just being honest. And, you know, it's hard to write good music sometimes when it has to be just based off of what you've lived or experienced. So there's obviously a lot of trial and error. And there's a lot of songs that, you know, I've, I've written that may or may not see the light of day. It's, you know, but that's, that's how it goes for every one good song. You're probably going to write 10, you know, not so good songs. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's how it goes. Yeah. But I, I do believe in the, the process of like starting from the bottom and kind of going back to what Yumi said before it, to me, it was important because that really, that really cements like, okay, do I really want to do this? Cause you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to eat a lot of grime before you get that cookie. Like you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to struggle. You're going to have bars where sometimes there's five people in the crowd or maybe sometimes there's 500 and they don't like you, but that's, right. that's part of the process. That's being real. And again, kind of mentioning what you said before, it was important because like you said, people only see the result. They only see what, you know, they only hear of you after you've made it. They don't know what, what it's like to get there. And that's fine. That's part of the allure. You know, you, they, you, you don't necessarily want them to know, but that's, that's all in the process. That's how it works. Have you, have you ever had a situation in your career so far where you were like, you know what, this is too much, even though I may be strong enough to handle adversity or just, the responses that people uh, have is very, you know, few and far between, but have you had those stretches where it's just like, I don't want to say you want to give up, but maybe it's just, you know what, I got to rethink this as far as how you're approaching it. You know what I have, I have, and a lot of artists might, you know, even some fellow artists, I know friends of mine, some people, some people don't like to talk about it, but I'm very open about it. I, I've probably thought about quitting more times than I can count. And, but I think that's, that's the authenticity of it. You know, sometimes it's financial trouble. Sometimes it's, you know, a a certain release wasn't responded to in a way you thought it would be right. Or, uh, you know, some, sometimes a video is, you know, not the way people wanted it. I could give you a list of things, but I've had it happen a lot. And what's kept me going is you kind of think to yourself, like, well, why did I start? you have to remind yourself, like, why did I do this for? And mm-hmm. as long as you keep that in your head and you can keep, you could keep that focus and you can remind yourself, like, it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be, you know, what you want it to be. Just stay focused. And nine times out of 10, you know, if, if you could just hold on through that dark time, it, it doesn't last. It, it goes away really quick. So, you, you know, you just have to hold on. That's as honest as honest can be, because I feel like if you love something so much, as far as not just what you do, but you could you could put this in different parts of life too, be it if it's relationships, friendships, business partnerships, whatever you want to call it. Hundred percent, man. A ton of stretches where you're gonna be like, What the hell? I don't I don't think I wanna do this. Like or you're gonna doubt not just yourself but the process like you said, right? Like I mean, I feel like if you love something as deeply and as passionately as you do, you're gonna run into those uh you know, those scenarios but I always feel like it makes a great journey because or a great conversation when it comes to that because you could you could speak on that I could speak on that a lot of people could speak on it and be like you know what I didn't give up because not just because I love it like right now you're not doing this for yourself Matt you're doing it for the people now so it's a different kind of responsibility that I feel like you have because when you turn over a gift that you have to the public it, it's it's not even about you anymore. It's about what you can be able to do, not just to be able to kind of get your art form out there, but just to keep elevating and keep pushing yourself and challenging yourself so you can be able to level up because, you know, well, that's at least how I take it because, you know, I kind of... No, you're absolutely way. right. Yeah, I know you said that's just how you think of it, but that's, that's the goal, and, and it has always been the goal, is I just want people, I want my music to help people. I want people to, you know, they could be happy by it. They could be angry by it. They could be sad. They could be everything in between, but I want people to feel something about it. It's never been about like fame or money. It's just been about like, cause you know, growing up music helped me through a lot of bad times. 
And I, I will gladly admit that there's times where, you know, you just, you know, whatever happens, whether you're younger, you know, high school, you know, things that don't matter now as an adult, but you know, back then you thought, Oh my God, the world was ending. <laughs> right? So, yep. but, but music helped me through all of it. And even as an adult, sometimes, you know, you put on that one song that just makes you smile for reasons you don't know. And I want that. That's what I want my music to do. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be number one on the billboard. I mean, I hope it does obviously, but that's never, that's not the main goal. The main goal is I want people to hear my music and feel something. That's it. Get it out there to enough people that can be able to get other people to be able to tap in, to get other people to be able to be, I mean, it's all, it's all inspirational pieces. That I always feel like, and it, it's, it can, it has, it has an opportunity to spread, but we just have to make sure that we get what we feel like we believe out there to as many people as possible and let it grow and let it, and let it grow organically, which I think is important. Matt Morrison is my guest on Next Legacy Radio, which kind of segues into this new single by the river that I want to talk to you about. So the origin of this one, let me know. And as you get ready to answer that question, I got to tell you again, like I said, I became a supporter when I started listening to your music and your catalog, but, uh, this one, I need to, I need, I need to know. I need to know some, some kind of backstory so we can be able to get the people sure, out there sure. and check it out on September first. So I need some history behind this one, sir. <laughs> well, this one, I is, you know what? I'm gonna have to think of the best way to think of this, and the way I would describe it is, it is unapologetically Matt Morrison. <laughs> and it, it, that's that's what I call it, right? It's as real as it could get. It's, it's a little heavier and I know, uh, it's a little, it's a little rougher, but it's, it's still honest. It just tells a story about what love will drive a person to do sometimes. And, uh, you know, that one I didn't personally experience because the song does involve a lot of, you know, people not being alive anymore. So this is obviously a fiction. Just want to make that clear. I'm not that right, kind right. of guy, <laughs> but, right. uh, but the song is about the power of relationship and the power of fear and the power of what things could happen and it's a little heavier it's a little swampy is what i like to call it it's like that swampy bluesy rock that has the honesty of country but that feel of that bluesy swamp rock so that's how i describe this one and like i said just unapologetic and real swampy is it is it like okay that's a good that's a good way to put it like murky i guess you could say like the yeah water. you could say like is that it is that it I would definitely say murky. I know I didn't even think of murky, but yeah, murky. Murky's a good one. Murky's a good one, man. All right. I, I might steal that okay. from you, just so you know. <laughs> Please take it. Please take it. That's what's up. And yeah. and this thing being out uh, September first, um, and and I'm definitely gonna direct some traffic to you know websites, social media, things like that too. So you know Appreciate when you get that. ready to you know push your you know this the single forward and get it out there to the public and things like that as well and the radio stations not just my station, but others will continue to, you know, support, we'll play it, we'll put it on rotation as we should. Um, Thank you very much. It, it, it's one of those important things where it's just like, you know, how we talked about earlier about just getting your your art form out to a, a, a bigger stage. So, you know, I feel like, you know, you and your team is kind of putting this forward. Like you're you're getting out there, you know, probably more so than before, which I think is important. So when you have someone like yourself that is in this this process of having people get to know you, um, do you find it uh, easier or difficult to navigate through, like, okay, am, am I confirming that this radio station is going to play this on rotation, or are you just kind of like in the wait and see and hope process when it comes to that? Yeah, a little bit of both, because I'll be honest with you, it's pretty new to me still with the radio thing, because being where I'm from, like, you know, I'm in Ontario – uh, the radio situation here is absolutely, you know, that's what I used to only attack. And it, it was absolutely insane up here. Like just, yeah. you know, very hard to get into. I'm sure, you know, in the States, you, if you're in radio, so you're aware, but for the people who aren't Canadian radio is notoriously difficult to, you know, get into. So mm. I'm, I'm new to it, but I, it's more of just an appreciation for the opportunities. If that makes sense. Right. Like when someone right. reaches out, I'm not worried about the what ifs. I'm just, you know what, I'm going to get on there like this interview that you were gracious enough to have me on. And I'm just going to put my best foot forward. And we're going to just hope we're going to let the people decide. That's the way I like to look at it. And just 
because you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. You don't want to worry about if they're going to do it or not do it because then you're just you're thinking negatively. You know what I mean? You just want to be let's just let's just be positive and just you know let's hope I give that right impression. Let's hope the music speaks for itself. Absolutely, and but but you know what? From and 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 Matt, I, I've been I've been <laughs> I've been on this rodeo for <laughs> for almost sixteen years now, so I'm gonna. <laughs> be a completely transparent when it comes to that. Like to me, it's the responsibility of the station to be able to say, Hey, you know what, Matt, this is going to stay on rotation for a while. Um, if it's to the point where people are requesting it or people are trying to figure out more about you, then we need to relay, relay that back to you and let you know. Um, exactly. To me, yeah. I think that we have, again, it goes back to what I say. It's like a situation where we can control the narrative but also we can allow people in to say, hey, you know what, we're not just going to program these music, this music to play. We're going to add new. We're going to add exciting. We're going to add I – want, I want you to have that feeling, Matt, where you're going to be like, you know what, oh, this, this, this song got played on Next Legacy Radio and they broke it first or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Like we, we as DJs or we as radio people should love that. Like those moments you can never take away from any moment in any part of music history – so I feel like that's why we're needed when it comes to that. But also, we have to support you. Well, you know what? If there was more radio producers and hosts like yourself, the world would be a hell of a lot better place musically. Let me tell you that, my friend. <laughs> and oh, I, I appreciate. I, I, <laughs> listen, I come from that. I come from that era and that age of it, it's necessary. I remember listening to certain songs and wanting to call a radio station and, and say, "Hey, can you play that again?" Or yeah. something would matter or it meant so much to me to be able to want that replay because, you know what, it, it's needed. Now it's a little different because we have so many different avenues. But as a station, we need to drive traffic. If someone's hearing your song for the first time, Matt, I want people to know they can go to the website, they can go to Apple, they can go to Spotify, they can go to wherever to go and get it. And it, it's it's just like investing in your in your brand and wanting to basically just continue to spread that love. So if you're gaining revenue from that, it's just, you know what, that's going to have Matt be able to go back into the studio and make more music. No pressure, but sure. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, it's funny you say no pressure, but that's exactly what it does, man. That's exactly, I, 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 got, I got nothing to hide. I got nothing to hide with people, you know what? I got... You know, we ain't pocketing this and living the high life, right? We we wanna we wanna keep pushing music out, and we wanna keep because, like I said, it's for the people. It, it really is. We want people to to love it. We want people to to change. We, we want the world to change. Obviously, I mean, I don't know if one song is gonna change the world, but that's what we try to do. So Here, you know, here's that's where, here's about. where I feel like here's why I feel like it's it's open season on what you just said. Like that one song can absolutely do now because you know why there's so many other songs that is probably turning out and i'm just being honest that's turning a lot of people off and they need a new a new voice or a new situation that's going on be it if it's in their life or even in their playlist where it's just like you know what i I need something new because i'm tired of the same old same old or i'm tired of people sounding the same let me hear this song by matt because he doesn't sound like them and I think that's why we have an opportunity of trying to bring this back to, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess you could say, I want to say uh, fun times, but also it's just, you know, inspirational, I feel like is another word to put it, because you know what? Music is supposed to inspire. It's not supposed to make you, <laughs> it's supposed to make you feel depressed. <laughs> you know, you know, I get what you say. You know, you are right, though. It, it's true. I've heard not just from you, man. I've heard from a lot of people these days that there is, you know, there is a change in the wind, so to speak. And it, it yeah. might not be here. It might not be here yet, but it, it's, it's coming. And people, feel, yeah. you know, they're yeah. aware. No, I was going to just say, people are aware. People, and it's almost like people don't know. Some people don't know they want to change, but they want to change. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. they just have, they right. haven't heard that song or that thing that made them want it yet. Because it is a lot of rinse and repeat these days. And look, I'm not bashing it. It works, clearly. No. You know, like, yeah. it's just, it doesn't work for everybody. That's why, right. I guess that's what it comes down to. 
And if it's not working for everybody, it's to a point where it's just like, you know, everybody eventually is going to get um, a little bored when it comes to hearing that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent, man. It's the truth. You know, like, yeah, I don't know why these days. And again, you know, this is just an honest as an artist. Every genre sounds so similar to each other now. And it's like yeah. there was nothing wrong with everybody being a little like the, the music being different. That's what made it. That's what made the music great was that it was unique, was that it didn't yeah. sound like everybody else. That's what made artists stand out. That's why the greats in every genre are the greats, because they didn't sound like anyone else. They sounded like right. them. And I feel like we've lost track of that. I feel like now it's, oh, so-and-so made a hit record. Well, I want to sound like them. It's like, well, no, you don't. You want to sound like you. And exactly. I, feel like that's, I feel like that's gone now. And it's, it's a shame, you know? It's gone. But Matt Morrison is my guest on Next Legacy Radio. Matt's going to change the game again. That's what I believe. Uh, you, know, I, I, you know what? I believe it, too. I do believe it. I believe it. It's going to be an uphill battle, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have yeah, it any other way, my friend. But you know what's important? It's not just you putting in the work to make sure that you are creating an art piece that people are going to um, gravitate to, but also um, having the team behind you is pretty important as well. Having the oh. right kinds of um, you know, uh, allies in your corner, different parts, be it if it's in promotions or if it's in radio or if it's in studio or whatever else, like having these people who are not yes people is going to be important with your growth and development too, right? I agree completely. In fact, I even tell people every time I get off the stage, man, or get out of the studio, I'll look people dead in the eye and I'll be like, did that suck? I want to know. Like, because you don't improve yeah. and get better if everyone's telling you the best. That's not how you get better. You need people to be real with you. They can't be, like you said, they can't be yes people. They need to be like, you know, that show was okay. You should have done this. And, you know, not necessarily they're right or wrong, but their input is definitely valued. Like, we're not, we're not gods out here, right? We're just people trying our best to make music. We're not perfect. Yeah. That's it. Your mic, your mic might stop, so you might have to improvise and figure out something, or something might happen where you might have to change a little bit of what you do in order for you to continue to keep moving forward. But those are the challenges that take place when it comes to uh, doing what you do. And again, like I said, when it comes to when it comes down to it, it's you know having the right kinds of people um, in your in your corner is going to be very important with your with not just your growth and development, but just getting it out there to the world. So it's super important. Um, and a couple more questions with Matt Morrison, my guest, Next Legacy Radio. Um, you mentioned something about uh, – <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. You mentioned something about this in the 90s. And so i got to ask you, man, what, what, what decade was what your favorite, 80s or 90s? Which one, if you had to choose? If I choose from the 80s and 90s? Oof. Yes, sir. See, ni I'll, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown. I don't want to take too much of your time, but 90s is famous for its music, and I, I love it. I can't deny it, but musically, it's not great music. You know what I mean? Like, we all, we all love the music because it's nostalgic, but when you actually break right. down the music, you're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so, I mean, if I had to pick, if I had to pick, i choose 80s. Like, I, I, I love the eight. I love 80s music, man. Like, like I love nineties. I'm not, I'm not bashing the nineties saying the music sucks. Like, you know, that was my, you know, that's where I grew up, but the eighties has, I mean, you can't compete with Prince. You know what I mean? You can't compete with like, you can't with like with Houston, you can't compete with even Bonnie Tyler had bangers. Like, yeah. I, you, you know, yeah. the eight, the eighties was the eighties. <laughs> you know, you got George Michael. I could go on. You know how it is. It's just, that was that was just a better era than the like the nineties was good, but it just it can't compete with the eighties for music. No 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 chance. So the so the nineties was a decade of um marketing growth when it came exactly. to the, when it comes to that. It came with and everybody was winning, which is really what you want out of the industry. Absolutely. You want to see it thrive. Oh, I think in the nineties we saw that. Um but the eighties, I mean, you know, not just saying that because I'm an eighties baby, but you can't get you can't the the diversity of how that decade played out is huge in oh yeah where I'm at right now like the eighties made me who I wanted to be when it comes to radio like and 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 Matt listen you can't you can't beat 
the soundtracks to movies in the eighties compared to no, the not even a chance. Just <laughs> you can't. No, oh. I mean hell, Top Gun. Everyone, everyone knows half of uh, half people only know that movie from its soundtrack. <laughs> like, like let's be real. Let's be Come real on. here. <laughs> I got to know King Foggins because of that damn that damn yeah. soundtrack. I Same here. Out, so. Same here, man. Same Enjoy. here. No. Oh uh, yeah. Enjoy. Like, you know what, but the 90s was cool, though, because it was the last decade before, like, everything was digitally marketed, though. Like, it started yeah. in the 90s. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but the 90s has that last authentic feeling to it. I think that's why we look back on it so so fondly, because it was just real back then still. It was real. I agree. And then it got digital, and then I'm actually going to tie into a final question that, um, that I feel like kind of ties into this is, you you mentioned it like you know we have these memories we, we mentioned 80s we mentioned what 90s meant to us as well and you you venture mm-hmm. into the 2010s now 2020s and we see the digital age of music evolve do you feel like in some sense in some senses of it that it's lost its soul in a sense and the reason why i ask this question is because we i used to i used to have to you know, and this was before I even started driving. I had to I had to go drive to Tower Records or somewhere else to go buy CDs and or tapes or whatever. Um, and I had to wait in line to get who I wanted to hear. And I had to make that journey and talk about, like, you know, hey, I, I got the very last tape of blah, blah, blah. Um, you, you know, so there, it comes with memories when it comes to that. Here it's easy for us as consumers to consume it which I feel like in some cases we take for granted the musicians because it's easy for us to be able to access it too. So do you feel like music in a sense has lost or is losing their soul based on how easy it is to um, consume music now? You know, it's funny you asked that question because I actually had a, a talk about that not too long ago with another artist. And my answer would be, Yes and no. And the reason, so I'll say no first because it's, it's a simple answer. There's still a lot of artists out there that, you know, it might be digital now, but there's a lot of artists that, and I, I try to put myself in this category where we really love our live show. Like, I love my live right. show. Like, we, that, that's our, to me, that's more important than anything else. And so mm-hmm. the fans that want to see that live show, that soul's still there because they're going to see that artist play live. Right. Like the concern is, so in that regard, I'd say no, but in terms of releases and like, as the fan, like you mentioned, like I'm the same, like, I remember, I remember when we burned C, I still have CDs. I burned as a kid that they have this weird special feeling to me still. Do you know what I mean? For no other reason than the fact that like we, these songs were special enough for us to like, you know, bootleg burn off of like LimeWire or some crap back in the day. And, I and remember, it, 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 I remember yeah, song, yeah. Man. And that was special. Or like you said, I remember going to the store with my mom or my dad when I was, you know, before I was old enough to buy like, you know, certain CDs, obviously. And I'd be going through the rack and I'd be picking the CDs that I wanted. And you would listen to the whole album though. Like that was yeah. what you would do. Like, or even I even had cassettes growing up. Like same thing with cassettes. Like you couldn't skip with a cassette. Well, you could, but you know what I mean. Like you didn't know where you didn't know where you're going to end up. So exactly. I remember. I remember you'd listen to the whole cassette, and that's what really made you connect to the song. Because maybe you didn't love every song, but you heard every song. And yep. in that regard, I think the soul. I'm not saying it's gone, but that that soul, that realness between that connection, rather between fan and an artist is not as strong as it used to be. I would agree with you on that. It's it, cause it, it's just not the same. You don't have to commit to, to an artist the way you used to. It, it's like now you could, we, we'd go on our phones. I could pull a million people up and it's, it's exactly. effortless. You're not thinking yep. about it. So. I, I agree. Um, so it's to your point, um, as I, as I say this real quick, I think it's important for us to realize that look, you know what, we do have the benefit of, having so much access to the world, I guess you could say, right? Like of every course. parts of country, every parts of, you, you know, the States, we have so much uh, of an opportunity to be able to have access. So same thing that I think, I think it's, you know, it's hot and cold. It's, you know, it's a, a blessing and a curse, I guess you could say when it comes to that. But also 
you know, because of where we lived and how we used to journey to go get what we got, it's a, you know, we have the opportunity to live you know, on both sides of the, the spectrum when it comes to that. So we can be able to add, see, again, it's re, we are reinventing how we should be able to appreciate how music is consumed now because mm-hmm. of the connection radio stations should have with you and you have with your fans and et cetera, et cetera. We all can have the opportunity to get a little closer than we probably ever did even back in our day when we were getting tapes and CDs, right? So yeah, you know, right yeah. here for us to be able to, you know, take, but also we have to appreciate it and we have to understand that, you know what, Matt, I know it's costing you some money to make these songs working in the studio, getting these people to help produce, blah, blah, blah. So we have to return the favor and get and find opportunities for you to be able to have that circ- circ- you know, circulate right back so you can be able to, you know, um, you know, be kept busy because of what you're doing. And we have to appreciate that. So, again, it goes back to the whole thing of what we were saying as far as gaining allies and having, you know, uh, you know, these things put in place for us to be able to grow. And I think that's – I think we have more opportunity than we did before. Oh, I agree. And that's the one thing I did want to add. Like, even though, like I said, it is different, I do still appreciate – because, I mean, I wouldn't be here without the new ways. But, you know, right. just being honest, it is different. But obviously I have oh, yeah. utilized them, so I cannot, you know, I can't attack them that much. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's going to make it great. And I'm looking forward to September 1st, um, the single By the River by Matt Morrison is going to be out. And not just that, we're going to also make sure that we celebrate the catalog that you have um, that's available now. And I want to give you the floor and let everybody know where they can find you, and um, if they wanted to book you as well, um, what direction can they take? For sure, for sure. I appreciate that. So, yeah, Matt Morrison, I will say quickly, in case anyone's wondering, it's M-O-R-S-O-N, Morrison, not Morrison. I know sometimes it's confusing. (laughs) But uh, Mm -hmm. you can find me on uh, all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, everything. I guess it's called X now. But uh, you can find me on all that, Matt Morrison Music. Um, you could book me mattmorrison.com and you can find all my music, Spotify, Apple, uh, uh, Amazon, literally anything, anything you get your music on, you get me on. There you go. Perfect. And in closing, um, not only do I appreciate the, the time, like I said, I had a, I had a chance to connect with you before you and I had actual dialogue. And like I said, I'm, I'm a supporter and a fan of your music, but also I, I'm a supporter and when I say that, I'm talking about, like, not just going in and streaming it, but also, you know, people still make purchases, right? Yeah. I'm still going to go yeah. in and buy what I need to buy and support what I need to support and make sure that, you know, we, we tell other people. But not just that. From our radio stations 24-7, um, your music and your content will get regular rotation when it comes to that as well. We have different spots for everyone, but also – um, I just want you from a radio station standpoint to know that um, your music will be on rotation and will be on rotation, um, period. There, There's no well, expiration date that falls off, so I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> I got to say this. If I haven't said it already, like my appreciation towards you and your radio station, your team and everyone involved is, you know, unknowing. It's just it never ends. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me, and I, honestly, like, just thank you, man. That's all I could say. I don't know what else to say, but thank you. You know, you're, you're, you're showing me a lot of respect and support, and I don't forget those things. Hey, this is, this is the start of, you know, everything that I feel like we need to in order for us to be able to kind of change the narrative of how um, networking should be and how we consume music and how people should respond to um, artists who are, or are working hard in order to get the craft out. So this is... Between you and me, Matt, this is just the start of, um, and everything else is going to fall into place. So not only do I have your connects and contacts, I, I know I know your people. So your people will be in contact, and we'll, we'll make sure that we keep it consistent. It's not one of these situations, Matt, where we're like, all right, well, this is just going to be for the moment so we can support this new single. No, nah, it's forever. So, no, you know, that's, gonna, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. And, and Matt forever is going to come with communication and, you know, and um, input. So with that being said, 
Watch the magic, my friend. Watch the magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what that means, man? This is this is the start of a good friendship is what it sounds like. So I appreciate everything yeah. you're doing for me. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And not just that, thank you for um, not just coming on the Next Legacy Radio, but also um, continuing your path of passion that you have for what you do. Um, and, um, and, and I think we all have to give each other flowers while we're still here and everything else that comes with it, but it runs deeper than that. Not only that, I mean, we want to make sure that we, you know, spread your music and your, and your passion for it, um, to other people who hasn't had a chance to, um, you know, listen in to the legacy of Matt Morrison. So there you go right there in a nutshell. Let's get it. Let's do it. Thank, Let's do it. Thank you, <laughs> thank you man. No, th- again, thank you for having me. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the interview, and thank you for the good conversation. I really, it was a great conversation. I appreciate that. Uh, I just like two friends talking about music. I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a script. We don't do, uh, we don't do that here. I have the basics of of, of what I want to ask, and I just run with it. I just really talk energy. Too. That's, That's real. <laughs> That's real. That's how we do things. That's how we do things. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Matt. Morrison, I'm all over your social media, so I'll make sure you'll get a follow and a hit, and I'll make sure I'll get that out there to uh, to my people. So I appreciate you. Thank you again for um, just just continuing your legacy, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me again. Th- I just gotta keep saying thank you a million times. I just appreciate it. You know, you've you've been a you've been a blast, man. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate you. I'll be in touch, man. I'll, I'll hit you on the follow one uh, on social media. You'll see where it's coming. For sure. We'll be in touch, man. Next Legacy.